Hey guys, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 43 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly segment, I do quick reviews on all the games we play, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. If you haven't checked it out yet, on Monday I published an unboxing and review of the new game topper that we've been using. This thing is awesome. And if you want to, you can still order one on their website. I'll put a link in the description below. They still have a few left. This week's game spotlight is for a game called Cosmic Run. I'm also going to go over recommendations for games that play with eight or more players that a friend asked me for. This game spotlight is a new thing I'm trying out each week where I pick one game and I go into a little bit more detail. I don't get into all the rules, but enough to show you how the game plays so that you can see if it's something that you're interested in or not. What do you think about this new game spotlight I've been trying out? Do you like it? If so, what game do you think I should spotlight next? Leave it in the comments below. I'm going to start off with one piece of news and then I've got another one for the end of the episode. I want to say thanks to my loyal viewers, Tom and Jessica Hines. They totally busted me last week. Cosmic Run is currently out of print, but they launched on Kickstarter Cosmic Run Regeneration, which is basically Cosmic Run 2.0. It launched last week and I just totally spaced and forgot to put it in my news segment. It launched last Wednesday. There's still almost two weeks left in case you want to order it. I'll put a link below in the description. I went out and backed it on day one. I'm really excited for it to come out later this year. Let's get right into the game spotlight for Cosmic Run. This game is for one to four players, ages eight and up, and plays in 30 minutes. Hopefully this game spotlight gives you an idea of whether or not you would like to back Cosmic Run Regeneration on Kickstarter. The Regeneration plays very similar to Cosmic Run. They made a few minor tweaks to improve the game, but here is the spotlight on Cosmic Run. In Cosmic Run, you're racing to discover five planets before they get blown up by asteroids. Each player starts with 10 victory points and a technology card that matches the color of their spaceships. There are multiple ways you can earn points in the game by moving your spaceships up the planet tracks, by acquiring crystals which are worth one, two, or three points, and through alien cards. If a player reaches the top of a planet track, they discover the planet and everyone immediately scores wherever they are on the track. If a planet gets hit three times by an asteroid, the planet blows up and everyone scores immediately wherever they are on the planet track. Whenever a planet is discovered or blown up, the planet is turned over. On your turn, you roll six dice. The first thing you do is check to see if an asteroid hits any of the planets. With five planets left in a four player game, if the sum of the red dice is nine or more, the planet number on the blue dice gets hit by an asteroid. In this example, planet two would have been hit by an asteroid. After checking for asteroids, you must place at least one of your dice somewhere. Planet one requires a dice roll of one, planet two is two of a kind, planet three is three of a kind, etc. You can place as many of the dice as you would like on different spots, but you have to place at least one every roll. Then you re-roll. You continue placing dice and re-rolling until you are out of dice. One really cool thing about Cosmic Run is that you rarely feel like dice are wasted unless you play super risky. If you have dice that you can't place anywhere, you can place them next to your technology track. Then at the end of your turn, you move your marker up the technology track. You can use this power during your turn for cool things like re-rolling dice, taking crystals, and modifying dice. You don't have to roll all of one number in one roll. For example, if you are going for three of a kind, you could put two dice on planet three in hopes that a future roll will give you a third dice of that same number. If you get that third die, you can place it there and you would then move up one spot on the track at the end of your turn. You can also place dice on alien cards. Acquiring these cards gives you additional abilities like getting crystals and modifying dice. There's also an endgame bonus for having different colored alien cards. As more planets get discovered or blown up, the game speeds up since asteroids come more frequently due to lower red dice requirements. Once all five planets have been discovered or blown up, you add the endgame alien bonus along with your crystals to your victory points and the player with the highest score wins the game. If you think this game sounds interesting, go back it on Kickstarter. I really like this game. The next game we played is Potion Explosion. This game is for two to four players ages eight and up and plays in 30 to 45 minutes. We're really enjoying Potion Explosion. It's kind of like Bejeweled in a board game form. If you remember that old computer game where there's all the different colored jewels and you're matching up certain colors and they cascade, you're doing that with marbles in this game. You're pulling a marble out, other marbles roll down. If similar colored marbles hit each other, they explode and you get those marbles. You then fill potions to score points. 
and then can drink the potions later for extra abilities. My sister-in-law Meredith was here last week and we played it with her. She liked it so much that she went out and bought it and texted me a picture tonight of her playing it with her husband. This game is really fun and plays with eight and up so you can play it with younger kids too and it's really fun for adults. We played it three times this last week. Really enjoying Potion Explosion. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks. What'd you do for Mother's Day? I slept in. Got some beautiful roses and cards. Woke up to a clean, spotless house. Um, we watched a movie, Slumdog Millionaire. And then we went to dinner at Chewy's and we also played Potion Explosion. Kinsey's already gone to bed though, so she's not playing with us. Very fun day. Happy Mother's Day. One of my friends is coming over to borrow some games to take to a work board game night. And he asked for some recommendations for games that play eight or more players. So all of these are eight or more players. He probably won't take them all, but I'm going to suggest some of these that he can borrow. Where Words is a hidden identity word game. It's kind of like 20 questions with secret identities. Four to 10 players, ages eight and up, and plays in 10 minutes. The Resistance, five to 10 players, ages 13 and up, and plays in about 30 minutes. Coup, which does normally two to six, but we have the expansion in here that brings it up to 10 players, ages 13 and up, and plays in 15 minutes. Good Cop, Bad Cop, the hidden identity bluffing and deduction game about a corrupted police district. Four to eight players, ages 12 and up, 10 to 20 minutes. Code names, two to eight players or more. You just split into two teams, honestly. Ages 14 and up and 15 minutes. Bang the Dice game is three to eight players, ages eight and up, plays in about 15 minutes. Deception, Murder in Hong Kong is four to 12 players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 15 to 30 minutes. Camel Up is ages eight and up, two to eight players, and plays in 30 minutes. We'll see which ones he wants to take with, but here are some great games to play with eight or more players. He ended up taking Camel Up, The Resistance, Coup, and Where Words. I'll be interested to see how his board game night turned out. The next game we played is Azul. This game is for two to four players, ages eight and up, and plays in 30 to 45 minutes. In Azul, you're tiling a wall in Portugal. This game is really beautiful. The pieces are amazing. I did a game spotlight in episode 40 a few weeks ago, so go check that out if you wanna hear more about how Azul plays. I'll put a link in the description. We're really enjoying our game topper. This thing is awesome. The dungeon mat is very thematic, especially when Travis has his friends over and they play Dungeons and Dragons. I freeze them as they try to stand up. They okay, need to roll. Roll. Roll your d20. 15. Now what's your damage here on this? It's 2d6 cold damage, so 2, 2d6. Mm -hmm. All right, so you do four damage to each guy. I find it fascinating that this old school tabletop gaming from the 1980s that you saw in movies like E.T. is making a comeback among youth today. They're playing it. You're seeing it in pop culture, like the Netflix series Stranger Things, which, by the way, is awesome. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. The next game we played this week is Diamonds. Diamonds is for two to six players ages eight and up and plays in 20 to 30 minutes. This is a very cool trick-taking game where you actually get rewarded for not following suit. That's a really unique aspect of this game. Ben, I can see your hand. It's very helpful, but I don't want to cheat. Can you cheat now? <laughs> Oh, I start. Huh. Yay. Diamond. <laughs> hey, where'd you get that card? I don't know. Maybe someone passed me the one of diamonds. That was yeah, an interesting pass. Why would you pass a diamond? Not a reason. In diamonds, what might look like a bad hand is not actually a bad hand. Even if you can't win the tricks, if you play out of suit, you get the reward every time you do that, which is really cool. So check this out if you like trick-taking games. I highly recommend Diamonds. Now for the news. I mentioned at the beginning that Cosmic Run Regeneration launched on Kickstarter, so go check that out if you're interested. The other piece of news I have is the Spiel des Jahres 2018 nominees were announced this week. This is the prestigious Board Game of the Year award that is generally awarded to a more family-friendly game, not the super deep ones. Examples of past winners are King Domino, Code names, Ticket to Ride, Dominion, Carcassonne, and the Settlers of Catan before they chopped it and renamed it to just Catan. Without further ado, the three nominees for the Spiel des Jahres this year are Azul, The Mind, 
and Luxor. I don't know anything about the last two, but I am excited for Azul and will definitely be cheering Azul on. The last two are not available in the States yet and will be available later on this year in the US. That's it for this week in board games. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of games you can play with your families and friends. Leave in the comments below what game you think I should spotlight in a future episode. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.